What's up, Fight Fans? It's your boy Tijon, and you already know what time it is this morning. It's time for your In the Mix. Oh, shit. All right, guys, so we got some awesome, awesome fights for you guys today. So we watched Bellator on Friday and UFC last night, and we had some pretty epic matches in both. So, of course, we're definitely going to start out, as we always do, we talk about Bellator first. So on Friday, we had Bellator 280 all the way in Paris, and this one was awesome, man. I really enjoyed it. The crowd is crazy over there, too. You know, um, they recently were like deeply able to like start having competition in Paris. So you know they go crazy over there. But this is the first match. Mike Shipman versus Gregory Bavain. Bavain is actually from France. So he got a huge pop, makes the most of that adrenaline and gets the win by KO in the first round. Awesome, awesome fight. That was a great big start off. Next we have Lorenz Larkin versus Kyle Stewart. I don't know what Kyle Stewart was thinking, but his game plan was to keep this on the feet. He failed immediately after getting beat down in the closing second of the first round, luckily. And thankfully, the rep stepped in. I mean, Larkin just was beating the hell out of him. I don't know why he wouldn't train to keep this fight off of the feet and actually do some stuff on the ground. Larkin is a monster. But, I mean, I guess points from Ravery, maybe. I don't know. Next, though, Davey Gallone versus Benjamin Brander. <coughs> now, Gallone is another, um, I think he's a Frenchman as well. And I mean, Gallone just was super brutal in this fight. He, he put uh, Benjamin Brander in a crucifix and just rained down elbows until the ref stopped it in the second round. I mean, it was rough. You could see it when he opened him up and started having his eyebrow bleed. Like it, it was, it was bad. I was waiting for this fight to stop. Cause once you get somebody in a crucifix, that's basically it. That's the fight. Next, though, you have the clinic of Yoel Romero versus Alex, Alex Polizzi. So Yoel just straight up beat the hell out of this man for all three rounds. It was ridiculous. Like, he could put him away at any moment. Completely schooled Alex to the point where, I mean, if, if it went to decision, that was it. But he literally TKO'd him in the final second. Literally the very last second of that fight, the ref stepped in because he just, it was enough. Like, he did way too much damage for it to actually go to the card. So, Yoel got the victory. And even uh, Mel Melvin Van Hoop came out. And apparently, they're going to be, the, um, that's going to be, like, the next fight between them. Um, Yoel, like, Yoel's like, I'll see you next. Like, I'll see you soon. So, that's going to be a really, really good fight. Um, I'm ready for that. But let's get to the main event of <clears throat> Bellator 280, and that is Ryan Bader versus Chet Congo. And, you know, they had a bit of a rivalry, especially after their last match together, where um, it, like, ended in, like, because of an eye poke. But it didn't look like an eye poke to me. It was like he poked his nose and Chet Congo, you know, milked it. And so there was always, like, that bit of rivalry between the two. And Chet Congo tried to pull the same thing again, and it was not working for him. It was a very boring fight. Chet Congo's fault like it was just a boring fight and of course he's French so the, the Frenchmen in the crowd were just going crazy and was furious that the fight wasn't living up to expectations they were furious at Ryan Bader for fighting a technical fight and winning it that way but it was still a very one-sided victory like I knew Ryan Bader had this fight as I was watching it but God man it was so boring and I don't think it was Ryan Bader's fault though you know I don't I don't think that that was Mainly him, you know, Chet Congo made that fight boring. He did not want to fight. I don't want to see Chet Congo fight again after that. It was ridiculous. So, saying all that, let's get into the ratings for Bellator 280. You know how we do things here. We got five to fight forever. Four, this is awesome. Three, you still got it. Two, what? And one, boring. Don't watch it. Better off watching me. Um, <clears throat> I'll give it a three. I would say it's a three just because the main event sucked. But all the other fights were awesome. You know, we had some really good bangers of some match. We had a bunch of stoppages. It's just that last one was ass. And I don't think that I'll get any flack for saying that. Like, we weren't missing anything with that fight. And I think that Chet Congo really revealed himself as one he's too old to be fighting. And he realizes that. Like, he just didn't look like he wanted to be in there. <clears throat> and he looked like he wanted another easy way out. The same one that happened the last time. I really don't 
black party when it comes to that stuff, man. It, it was really sauce. That was real good sauce. I'm glad Ryan made it one. I hope they never fight. Like, I hope them two never meet again. And I hope check out goes down after that. Because that was a sorry performance by him. Honestly, sorry. That's, I got to tell it how it is. That's what I do. But let's move on now to UFC 274, Gaty vs. Oliveira event that happened last night. And that one, pretty good. Prelims were a little in, but we'll talk about it. So, first fight of the night was Journey Newsom versus Fernie Garcia. This fight went all the way to the distance, and Journey Newsom got the win after a pretty dominant stand up performance. Next, you have Ariana Carnelosi versus Lupi Godinez. This one also went the distance, but Godinez absolutely, absolutely dominated Ariana on the ground and damn near had her cry and quit after the second round. Like, I saw, like, she was completely defeated after the second round, so I knew Lupi had this, and I'm sure Lupi definitely won that mental edge. So, Lupi gets the decisive win in, um, you know, ref's decision. Very, very good uh fight for her. Next, we have Clayton Rodriguez versus CJ Vergara. And this one, another one that went the distance. I'm saying like like a bunch of these went all the way and I wasn't mad at it. This one was a really close one, but CJ did get the decision. I wasn't mad either way. It was just a really, really close fight. These guys really like were hammering at each other. You see them both bumped up, like not mad at all. Next, we have Tracy Cortez versus Melissa Gatto. I mean, good God, you already know how this one went, but I have to tell you, that it went all the way. Well, I guess I just told you it did. And the judges gave it to Tracy Cortez and the crowd went wild. I, um, you know, I wasn't mad at that one either. Tracy Cortez keeps her undefeated record alive. It was not the most entertaining fight this one, but I mean, it was a bit of a clinic. I had Tracy winning all the time, so congrats to Tracy. Next though, my boy Andre Fialio back at it again. I'm pretty sure, didn't he just fight in fight night last week? Or like two weeks ago. Either way, it's ungodly the fact that he's fighting once again. That's super quick back-to-back -back fight. Going against Cameron Van Camp. Uh oh, what happened? All right, sorry about that. But Fialio knocks him out with a beautiful left hook and gets the dub in the first round. Dude, Fialio's on fire, man. I told y'all watch out for Andre Fialio. Don't let that first fight fool you. This man is a dog. And he just proved that again last night. Super awesome performance. Next, though, we have Blagoy Ivanov versus Marcos Rogerio de Lima. And Marcos was on a two-win streak before this fight. Wasn't the most huge, like, fight, I guess. It, like, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, wasn't very entertaining. It did go the distance. Um, Marcos thought that he did enough to win. Judges scored it differently. Blagoy ended up getting the win and snapped Marcos's win streak. So that was pretty interesting stuff that happened. But next we have we have like a bit of a malfunction, I guess, with like the um the tail of the tape. It was pretty weird. So I had to get another picture. So sorry you don't get to see their stats or whatever. But this is Brandon Royville versus Matt Schnell. So Royville did amazing, bro. Locked in this deadly guillotine. You know I love a good guillotine, especially when the opponent can't get out. You got to respect a good guillotine. Royal gets it, and Matt taps with both hands. Like, he was done. He was like, I just want out. I need out. So he gets the win. Now he has the second most efficient wins of flyweight history. So congrats to Brandon Royval. Next, though, we have Macy Shiasson versus Norma Dumont. Now, this one was the first controversial fight of the night. It did go the distance. And contrary to everybody's opinion, Macy got the win after a very close fight. So, in my opinion, I had Norma winning, and I think the crowd did too. So, the moment that Macy got called that she won, the whole crowd booed profusely. It was pretty rough. Like, even Macy was, like, apologizing. And, I mean, it really, like, seemed to mentally get to her. So, it's unfortunate, but, I mean, the crowd saw it. Feel like the same thing I did, and you know, they voiced it. Next, though, we have Francisco Trinaldo versus Danny Roberts. Now, this one was just straight up hands, man like all hands, no grappling, barely any like wrestling, nothing, just straight hands all three rounds. Francisco, though, ended up being the better striker and got the dub. I'm not surprised by this win at all. He got the win by unanimous decision, it did go the distance, but very, very good fight. Real nice stand up between the two. Really entertaining. Next, though, 
we have Randy Brown versus Chaos Williams. Now we're in the main card. So I was very impressed and surprised that this fight went to the decision. I thought that this was going to be a knockout and I had Chaos getting it. And I thought that Chaos won this fight. And the judges scored it to Randy. This is the second controversial thing that happened. The crowd couldn't believe it. I was speechless. I thought Chaos won that fight, and I still do. I don't see how the rest thought that Randy won the end. I mean, this one was another one that was straight up stand up, basically. There's a little bit of wrestling, and I had Chaos. Chaos definitely had the bigger hit. I think um, Randy was a little bit more calculated, but Chaos had the better hands. And if that's a stand up fight, you got to give it to the guy that's making the most damage, in my opinion, man. So. I don't agree with that decision at all, but oh, by the way, it was a good fight. Next though, we see Shogun Hua versus Ovid St. Pro. Now, I mean, you can tell by the age that these guys are up there, and that's exactly what we basically saw, was two older guys fight that weren't trying to do too much damage to each other. It just wasn't that fun of a fight at all. Like, they're out of their primes, you know, they're probably more so getting the check and just in it for like the fans and like they love the, the, the sport but they're done trying to injure each other. You know, it, it just wasn't that big of a fight. It really wasn't that fun. And Ovens ends up getting the dub, making it 2-0 and against Shogun Hula. So I'm pretty sure that's the last you're going to see of these two together, you know, going against each other. But overall, like, you know, I can't I can't complain too much. You got to take their age into account and, like, their illustrious careers. Shogun is coming up on 20 years, bro, in this industry. So... Respect to him, props to him for even staying in this long. It's crazy. Next though, we have Michael Chandler versus Tony Ferguson. And if you're on social media at all, you already know how this ended up, bro. Michael Chandler, a freaking dog, bro. Hunts Tony Ferguson's face in. Just a straight up snap kick, front kick right to the chin. Knocks Tony Ferguson, lights out, sends him straight to Jesus. He was gone. Like, it took him a while to recover from that front kick. Massive, massive W for Michael Chandler. Loved it. Absolutely awesome. I'm glad he got that one in so decisively. I am a bit sad, though, for Tony Ferguson, because you hate to see it. Like, it, it reminded me of that whole Frankie Edgar thing. The same kind of kick. Rough stuff. Now, Rose Namajunas versus Carla Esparza. Wow, man. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe how this turned out. And it, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Carla Esparza ends up getting the decision win off of a bullshit fight. Let's just go ahead and call the spade a spade. This fight was bullshit. There was nothing going on all five rounds. I don't even know why Rose was celebrating at the end. No one should have been proud of that performance. But the fact that after a bullshit fight, after a boring fight, they stripped Rose of that title is ridiculous. I had no intention at all of awarding any round really to Carla as far as after that fight, just because it was boring. Like you gotta do more to beat the champ. I've said it several times now, you can't go into a fight and not like decisively win some rounds. And there was no decisive win on any round. It's crazy how they really did thug Rose like that, man. And that just broke her felt so bad for uh, Rose seeing her like that because she really did think that she had the dub and I did too. You didn't do enough, Carla. I'm sorry. I'm, I mean, congrats for getting it. You know, that's a that's a great thing to do. But I mean, dude, super boring fight. You know, I, uh, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Not, not good. Not bueno. Not for me. Anyway, though, next, the last fight, the main event, Charles Oliveira versus Justin Gaethje. Now, man, I don't care what nobody says. Charles Oliveira is on another effing level after this fight. He almost got leveled, bro. He almost gets knocked out and recovers again like he does every fight this year and locks in the rear naked choke and damn near puts Justin Gaethje to sleep. I don't want to hear nothing from nobody. Charles Oliveira is the GOAT of the uh, lightweight division right now. There's nobody topping him. He is the man. Goes right up to Dana, and unfortunately, though, after all the controversy that happened on the scale, he is stripped of the title, and he's now the number one contender. It's ridiculous, man. It sucks, but that is the rules. We went over it in the All Road Crew last night, you know, um, the whole scale situation. 
It's very controversial. I think he should appeal, especially since he won. Go get your money, dog. And, you know, win the next one, bro. I'm pretty sure Islam may be next. Maybe next. I don't know. I don't really know who's next. But Islam would be a good fight. I would love to see Islam versus Charles for the belt. That would be a really, really entertaining fight. So we'll see, though. Benil is up there, too. Benil there is. That's another fight. And I think that him and, there, and Islam should fight first, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah. Now the wheels are turning. But yeah, man, this was a really good card. Like, other than the controversial stuff that happened before the fights and, you know, some of them weird decisions that we got. I mean, that's the problem, man, with judges. That you can't let the judges, um, you know, determine the fight. You got to finish it, especially when they're close, or else you'll get screwed over. And I think Rose should have been learned that lesson. And I mean, you just could tell she was just coasting that fight. Shouldn't have did that at all. Anyway, though, I'll do the ratings real quick for um, uh, UFC. UFC, I would give, um, it loses a star for um, the Rose fight. So I'll keep it at three. Before I was gonna give it a four because that Tony Ferguson, uh, Mike Chandler fight was awesome. Super quick, quick. I, I love a good knockout. I think everybody loves a good knockout. And Charles Oliveira is just a dog. That performance was amazing. So I would have gave it a four, but ah, man, that Rose one killed me. That one really, like, it, it hurt to see. I hated that. I hated the outcome of it and I hated the fight in general. So I'll keep it at three stars. Still a good one, though. You should definitely check it out if you didn't. I, I, I enjoyed myself. So that is your MMA news of the weekend. It was super great. Uh, we got some more stuff coming next week. You know, uh, tonight is WrestleMania Backlash. So you know we'll be covering that. We got a whole lot more coming out for you guys, man. So just keep staying tuned. You know, you know how we do it. And you know, I will be, you know, your guy for all your news. So just stay tuned, man. We got a whole lot going for you guys. But thank you guys for watching. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe to Take It to the Ring. Follow us on Instagram at Take uh, TTR Wrestling, uh, Twitter, Take It to the Ring. Um, yeah, we got a whole lot coming, man. I keep saying it, but it's true. So until next time, guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, we got the rundown for Backlash and we got um, top 10. So. You'll see me. Uh, until then, guys, it's your boy T-John. Thank you guys for watching. Keep it real.